Hey, welcome to Draft Academy. My name is Mike. In this tutorial, I want to talk to you about using classes and IDs in CSS. Now, classes and IDs allow us to define identifiers and to define groups of CSS styling that should be applied to specific HTML elements on our website. Now, this is one of those topics that I think a lot of new people to CSS struggle with. In particular, they struggle with what's the difference between a class and an ID. As you'll see throughout this video, functionally, they're basically doing the same thing. Classes and IDs allow us to define like predefined chunks of CSS styling, and then we can take those chunks and use them on our HTML elements. In this tutorial, I'm gonna show you guys exactly what the differences are between the two, when you should use a class, and when you should use an ID, and then I'm also just gonna show you how to use them in HTML. So over here, I just have my HTML file, and this is my index.html file. Imagine that I wanted to style this header one. All right, one way I could do that would be to use inline styling. I could say style is equal to whatever. I could give it like a color. But imagine that I didn't want to use inline styling. And there's a lot of reasons you might not want to use inline styling. You know, maybe you just want to keep all of your code inside of your CSS files. Maybe you think that uh, CSS is a little bit messy inside of HTML. There's a lot of reasons why you might just want to take this CSS and put it somewhere else. Well, imagine that I wanted to use the CSS somewhere else, but I only wanted to style this CSS tutorial header. So let's say I wanted to make this blue. Well, one way I could do that is by coming over here to my style.css file, and I could define a CSS attribute. So I could say h1, and then inside of this H1, I could just give it like a color. So we can make it blue. And now when I refresh my page over here, you'll notice that the header turns blue. Mission accomplished, right? We did everything we wanted to do. Here's the problem. I also have this other HTML file, page2.html, and this is also using that same style sheet. And so my goal was only to cover or to color this header blue but what actually ended up happening was page two's header also got colored blue. And that's because when I define H1 inside of this style sheet, it's gonna style every single H1 that this style sheet's being applied to. So the H1's in both of these pages. So the question is, how can I only style this one H1 attribute without using inline styling? And this is where something like an ID can come in handy. So I can give this h1 an identifier. So I can say id is equal to, and then inside of these quotation marks, I can give this an id. So I could say like Mike's h1. Now here's the thing about ids. I can give any element I want an id, but you can only give it one id. So this is the id that I'm giving to this HTML element, and this is the only id that it can have. Now what I can do is I can use this id and I can refer to this element inside of my style.css file using that ID. So over here, instead of saying h1, we can say hashtag, and then we can say Mike's h1. And so what we're doing is we're referring to the name of the ID of that element. So when I use this hashtag, it basically tells CSS like, hey, we're defining the code for a particular HTML ID and it, this is the name, and then here's all the code that we want inside of it. So now when I refresh my index.html page, it's still getting colored blue, but if I come over here to page two, it's not gonna be colored blue anymore because h2 isn't using this ID. Now, if I wanted to also color this header over here on page two, I could give this that same ID. So I could come down here to this header and I can say, ID is equal to Mike's H1. And actually we need quotation marks here. And now when I re refresh this page, this will be colored blue as well. And so you can take these IDs and you can give them to you know multiple HTML elements, but each HTML element can only have one ID associated to it. So I couldn't like define another ID in here. Like this can only have one ID and that ID is gonna be used to refer to this particular element. In addition to defining IDs, I can also define something called a class. And classes are gonna come in handy because you can give an HTML element as many classes as you want. So remember, 
these elements can only have one ID. So if I was defining some styling up here, that HTML element can only use the code that's in here. But I can use a class and it'll basically do the same thing, but HTML elements are able to use multiple classes. So let's say that I wanted to create a really fancy border inside of my uh, CSS, right? So I wanted to make a fancy border. I can make a CSS class. And the way that you create a CSS class is by typing a dot, and then you wanna type in the name of the class that you wanna create. So we'll call this fancy border. And then I wanna do these open and close curly brackets. And so in here, I can define all of the code for my fancy border. So I could say border, and we'll make it three pixels dashed and red. So now this border is contained inside of this fancy border class. Now let's say I wanted to also define another class. Maybe this time we'll make a class that will color the text blue. So I could say blue text. And this class will basically just make the color blue. Or you know what, yeah, so we'll make it blue. So I have these two classes. And I can actually now include these classes inside of my different HTML elements. So I can come over here to this index.html file and I can come over here to this main and in here I can specify uh, a, a particular class that I want to give to this. So I can say class is equal to, and then you wanna type out the name of the class. So I could give this that fancy border that I just created. And now when I refresh the page, you'll see that this paragraph down here is gonna be using that fancy red border, right? So I defined all of the code for that border over here in this CSS class. And then in here, I included this CSS class inside of my HTML tag. What's cool about classes is I, is I can add multiple classes into the same element. So if I wanna add another class, for example, that blue text class, I can just put a space and then put in this blue text class. And now this, text should be colored blue, which it is. So now we've applied the stylings from two classes. So we got that border. And then we also got this blue text from both of those classes. So this is like the first big difference between IDs and classes is that you can only have one ID on an HTML element, but you can have as many classes as you want. And so classes are a lot more powerful than IDs in the sense that you can use more than one on a particular element. But other than that though, it seems like classes and IDs are basically the same, right? I mean, we're essentially doing the same thing. We're defining a particular name, right? A named value and we're giving it some CSS attributes. And by the way, I could put as many like CSS attributes in here as I wanted. I could give it like a background color. You know, you could put like, you know, hundreds of different CSS attributes inside your IDs and classes. I'm just giving you some simple examples just so it's easy for you to wrap your head around it. But you know, like I said, I mean, functionally, you know, classes and IDs are essentially doing the same thing. I mean, the only real difference is that we can include more than one class in our HTML element, whereas we can only have one ID. So what's the difference? Well, here's really the difference is that IDs are meant to be used to identify specific elements in our HTML page. So an ID is really meant as an identifier. And actually, we're not gonna get into this too much in this CSS course, but IDs have special attributes with the browser. So if you're using a language like JavaScript, you can use IDs to access and to identify certain elements in your HTML. And these IDs can also be used by the browser to do different things. But as far as CSS is concerned, it doesn't really care you know, if you're using an ID or if you're using a class. So a good rule of thumb is use IDs to identify particular elements. And I think a good rule of thumb personally that I use is I'll use an ID only for like one element or maybe like two or three elements, but I'm not gonna be putting the same ID on like a bunch of different elements. That's what classes are for. I can define a class and I can put that class on, you know, hundreds of different HTML elements if I want. That's really the main use of classes. IDs are used more for the purposes of identification. So you don't have to follow those rules. You know, you can just go off and do whatever you want. You can, you know, put an ID on a hundred different HTML elements. CSS doesn't care. It really does not care. 
it's, it'll still work, it'll still style everything. But just remember that if you're planning to use CSS in any sort of an environment with other programmers, generally they're gonna be using IDs for the purpose of identification, and they're gonna use classes for the purpose of storing like little blocks of styling code. So keep that in mind, and I hope you learned a little bit today about classes and IDs. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe to Draft Academy to be the first to know when we release new content. Also, we're always looking to improve, so if you have any constructive criticism or questions or anything, leave a comment below. Finally, if you're enjoying Draft Academy and you want to help us grow, head over to draftacademy.com forward slash contribute and invest in our future.